Welcome to our video presentation, Integrating vCenter SSO with Active Directory. Today, I'm going to introduce myself and tell you just a little bit about VM sources. Then we're going to show you two ways of integrating your VMware environment with Active Directory. The first method I'll show you involves joining the VCSA to your Active Directory domain and then using the machine account to authenticate against AD. The second method I'll show you is the way that we actually do it in production and simply leverages Active Directory as an LDAP server. My name is John Borhek, and I'm the Lead Solutions Architect at VMSource's Virtualization. I've been actively consulting with VMware, Linux, networking, and cloud computing for more than 10 years. My job takes me all over the world, working with clients of all sizes, from three host VMware vSphere clusters to million square foot data centers. Please take the time to visit our website vmsources.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on LinkedIn, or like us on Facebook. VM Sources is a premier provider of disaster recovery as a service, VMware consulting, and real-world VMware training. Our DRAAS plans feature one-touch failover that our certified DR consultants will assist you in setting up, validating, and periodically testing. No other provider will deliver the same levels of service and attention to detail as VM sources. Call us first or when other providers are falling short. 866-644-7764. Let's get started with Active Directory and vCenter SSO. SSO is a standalone Kerberos-based directory used for authenticating users into vCenter and other VMware vSphere components and extensions. SSO is a subset of the Platform Services Controller, and it's possible to install multiple PSCs within a site or distribute them across sites to provide redundancy and uniform login for all vSphere instances of an organization. Let's get started with method one of our demonstration, joining the VCSA to Active Directory. Remember, if you're going to join your VCSA to Active Directory, it may only be joined to one domain it will require a reboot of the VCSA and thereafter VCSA becomes a subset of Active Directory. In order to join our VCSA to the domain, we're going to need to log in to the vSphere web client. Today, we're going to use the HTML5 based client that you'll find at HTTPS followed by the FQDN of your vCenter forward slash UI. And we're going to log in as the only presently configured user, which is administrator at whatever SSO domain you created. We used administrator at vSphere.local as our default account. The first thing we need to do if you're not already there is go home and then to administration and then to single sign on configuration. And we're going to start with Active Directory domain. We'll choose join AD. Our domain is VM Classroom. Our username is what we've predefined, and we'll specify a password. Our VCSA has successfully joined the domain, and now we need to reboot it. In order to reboot our VCSA, there are a couple of different methods we could employ. We could log in to the VAMI interface at the FQDN of our VCSA colon 5480, or what I would prefer to do is log into the ESX server that's hosting our VCSA. So I'm going to go home, I'm going to go to hosts and clusters, and I'm going to look at the VCSA and determine that it is presently on host ESX 102. I'm going to log into the embedded host client of that host, and this is also forward slash UI because it's a HTML5 interface. We're going to log in as root, and, and I'm going to go ahead and right-click on the VCSA to open a remote console. And once the remote console window is open, I see what's called the DCUI, or Direct Console User Interface, of the vCenter server appliance. I click inside of my console. I'm going to press the space bar to wake up the interface. Now I'm going to press F12 and provide the root password and F11 for a restart. 
One of the primary advantages of VCSA 6.7 is that it's faster in the reboot process and uses fewer system resources. Nevertheless, we're probably three to five minutes away from being able to log back into our VCSA and test our Active Directory integration. Let's watch for just a second. Even though the VMware Photon operating system of our VCSA is completely booted, that doesn't mean that all of the services are started. If we press Control-Alt to release our cursor and attempt to reload our VCSA, we're going to see that the services are not yet available. We just need to be patient at this point. When the VCSA is completely rebooted and services are restarted, you can either click on Refresh or it may refresh on its own to show you a login screen. After patiently waiting for the web client to completely start, we can log back into vCenter. But we need to do so as administrator at whatever SSO domain you've configured because we haven't yet configured the identity source. Simply because we've joined our VCSA virtual machine to the domain has no implications on SSO being able to use Active Directory as an identity source. What we need to do now is go to Home, go to Administration, and choose SSO Configuration. We're going to choose Identity Sources. Now we're going to choose Add Identity Source. And in this case, we're going to choose Active Directory with integrated Windows authentication using the machine account. and we're ready to move forward. The last thing we need to do is configure a global permission that will allow our users to log in using our Active Directory identity source. I'm going to select global permissions. I'm going to choose plus. I'll select the domain vmclassroom.com. I'm going to choose a user group from the domain. In this case, we have a pre-configured domain called esxadmins. I'll allow that user group the role of administrator. We'll propagate this to children and we'll choose OK. At this point, we can log out as administrator at our SSO domain and log back in using our Active Directory credentials. I'm going to input my credentials in UPN format as a best practice. And you can now see that we're logged into vCenter as our Active Directory user. Now let's take a look at our preferred method of integrating Active Directory with vSphere. This is the method that we use with all of our clients and internally in our production environment. By adding Active Directory over LDAP, we're merely making vCenter SSO a client of an AD domain. You can add as many AD domains as you like. Each is a separate identity source with no intra-domain trust relationship required. The VCSA does not require a time-consuming reboot, and your VCSA and vCenter SSO remain a superset of Active Directory, not a subset. Let's go ahead and get started by logging into the HTML5 interface of our VCSA using the administrator account for our vSphere SSO. We're going to go ahead and go to Home, and then Administration, Single Sign-On Configuration, and then Identity Sources. In this case, we're simply going to add an identity source instead of joining our VCSA to the domain directly. We're going to choose Active Directory over LDAP. We're going to provide this a name. And we're going to enter the credentials following a standard LDAP format.
In our domain, the base DN for users and the base DN for groups is the same. We now need to provide a username that's allowed to browse domain users and groups. And a password. We're going to choose connect to any domain controller in the domain. We have three. And we're going to select OK. We can see that almost instantly vmclassroom.com has been added as an LDAP identity source. And we're going to proceed to global permissions where we choose plus. We're going to choose the identity source VM Classroom. We'll provide a pre-configured group. We have the pre-configured group ESX admins. We're going to delegate the role of administrator and propagate to children. Now we're going to log out as administrator at our SSO domain. And we'll log back in using our pre-configured Active Directory user account. And here you can see we've successfully logged in to our vCenter as our pre-configured Active Directory user account, demonstrating the functionality of using Active Directory LDAP as an identity source without joining the VCSA to your domain. I'm John Borhek, and I hope you've enjoyed watching our video about two ways to integrate vCenter SSO with Active Directory. No matter what your VMware or DRAAS needs, be sure to call VM sources first. Our client-facing attitude will put your needs first every time. Call us at 866-644-7764. 866-644-7764.